Hello there. Can you fire bullets using light? This is a question that arose by looking at these. These are anti-aircraft weapons that apparently shoot photonically propelled tungsten rounds. Now obviously, this is again just some sci-fi fancy talk to make a weapon sound cool. I mean, is it even possible to propel anything with light? To propel something, you need to have a force pushing on whatever you are trying to propel. When you launch a rocket, you expel gas out of the engines, which results in a force pushing the rocket upwards. When you fire a gun, the expanding gas of the exploding gunpowder pushes the bullet out of the cannon. But it's hard to imagine using light to push on anything. Light cannot exert any push, right? Well, actually, light does exert a force on whatever it hits. But it is an incredibly tiny amount of force, which is why you don't feel ambient light pressing on your skin. Likewise, if you use a laser pointer on an object, that object won't move. The pressure exerted by the light beam is just way too small. Nonetheless, despite the ridiculously low push you get from light, there is a very serious potential application for it. The light sail. The light sail is a way of propulsion for a spacecraft, and it does exactly what its name suggests. It's using light just like a regular sail uses wind. A light sail deployed in space would get pushed by the light from the sun. Actually, this form of propulsion might be used to fly small probes to nearby stars, and here's why. The push you get on the sail is tiny, meaning that the probe would accelerate incredibly slowly. But, over long periods of time, even that small acceleration would bring the spacecraft to incredible speeds, potentially reaching a significant fraction of the speed of light, therefore allowing the probe to be sent to nearby stars in just a few years, maybe decades. Also, instead of relying on the light from the sun, it would be possible to shine a laser on the sail from Earth, greatly speeding up the process. So, if you can push a spacecraft using a laser, can you push an anti-aircraft tungsten round? Before we dive into the math, I actually want to take a look at why the bullet is made of tungsten. Now, as you might have guessed by now, I'm French. So I'm not really an expert in firearms and I'm not really an expert in ammunition. But I do know that tungsten is not used very much when making a bullet. So I only really see two reasons for making a round out of tungsten. The first is heat resistance, which is going to be useful in our case as we are propelling the round using light. But we'll come back to that. Indeed, tungsten is notorious for its very high melting point of 3422 degrees C or 6192 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, I've seen my analytics, so here is me being nice and making the conversion for you, but only this time. The second reason is the very high density of tungsten. Tungsten is about as dense as gold and about 70% more dense than lead, and high density is very good for armor penetration. For instance, depleted uranium is sometimes used on the tip of armor penetrating rounds for that very reason. But why does density matter to penetrate armor? Well, here is Newton's formula for impact depth. It says that the impact depth is approximately equal to the ratio of density multiplied by the length of the projectile. We can apply that formula for our case. If we assume that the anti-aircraft rounds used have a caliber of 20 mm, then they should have a length of about 75 mm. Let's also assume that we are trying to penetrate steel. Plug the numbers in and you get an impact depth of about 18.3 cm. Not bad. So, now that we have addressed why tungsten is used, let's go back to our original problem. Can you fire these rounds using light? Well, let's do the math. We will assume that the tungsten round is being pushed by a laser inside the cannon. To evaluate the plausibility of that weapon, we need to calculate the power of that laser. Additionally, I will assume that the back of the tungsten round is perfectly reflective, meaning that it is a perfect mirror that reflects all of the light coming in. Why do I need that? First, if none of the light is absorbed, then the round won't heat up so there is no chance of it melting. That's good. Secondly, it makes the whole machine more efficient. That's due to conservation of momentum. If you throw a photon at the back of the bullet, the bullet gets pushed a little bit because of the momentum of the photon. If the photon is absorbed, the bullet inherits the momentum of the photon coming in. But if the photon is reflected back, then the bullet inherits the momentum of the photon coming in and it inherits the momentum of the photon being sent back. So the bullet gets double the momentum just for being reflective. When you shine your laser on the back of the round, inside the cannon, you are actually shooting a huge amount of photons at the round. This effectively acts like the pressure is exerted on the back of the bullet. And the pressure light exerts on an object has this formula. Pressure equals irradiance divided by the speed of light. Irradiance represents the power of light over the area. The 2 is here because remember, the back of the bullet is perfectly reflective, so you get double the momentum out of each photon. If you multiply that pressure by the area on which the pressure is exerted, you get the force applied to the object. We end up with the irradiance multiplied by the area. And remember, irradiance is the power of light divided by the area. So if you multiply that by the area, well then you are only left with the power of the light. Great, that's what we want. So now we have this equation. Pretty nice, but we don't know what the force is. No worries, there is also a formula for this. Work equals force times distance. Work is simply the amount of energy you are putting in the system. And distance represents the distance along which you are applying the force to the system. In our case, we are applying a force to the bullet along the length of the cannon. 
So let's replace the distance by that length. Rearrange the equation and we have force equals work divided by length. What is the work applied to the bullet? Well, it is equal to the amount of kinetic energy the bullet has when it exits the cannon. And the expression for kinetic energy is 1 half times mass times velocity squared. Plug that in and you get the equation for the force. So now we have two equations for the force. Smoosh them together and you have this. Finally, rearrange this equation to isolate the power and we end up with the final equation. Unfortunately, we can't use the formula just yet. We need the mass of the bullet. No worries, it's going to be quick. Let's approximate the shape of the bullet as a cone on top of a cylinder, the height of the cylinder representing two thirds of the total height. So the formula for the volume of the bullet is this. Multiply that by the density of tungsten and we get the mass of the round. 350 grams apparently, that's one heavy bullet. Great, we now have the numbers to calculate the power of the laser used to fire the tungsten round. Plug this in the formula and we get a whopping 16.8 terawatts. Okay, that's quite impressive, but some existing lasers can go in the hundreds of terawatts. But only for incredibly short pulses of a trillionth of a second. So before jumping to conclusions, we need to look at how long our laser will need to fire. We can calculate that time easily by using Newton's second law. Just integrate once on both sides. Replace the force with the equation we found earlier and we get this. Time equals 2 times the length of the cannon divided by muzzle velocity. Plug the numbers in and you get 2.5 milliseconds. Holy sh**! So our terawatt laser needs to fire for more than 2 milliseconds. It's insane. If you multiply the power by the time, you get a total of 42 gigajoules per shot. Why are we doing this? Why are we making up cipher weapons that just don't make any sense? Can we not just use gunpowder? Gunpowder is nice, it works very well. Just use that. We already looked at the railgun, it we saw how stupid it was. And now this. Look at the expense, they're using standard firearms. They're right, just do that. Be like the expense. Oh, but Axel, what about the plasma weapons Vanu uses? Oh, we'll get to that. Not today, but we'll get to that at some point, don't you worry. 42 gigajoules per shot is absurd. I mean, the kinetic energy of the bullet when it exits the cannon is just 112 kilojoules. So you get an efficiency that is ridiculously low. Don't do that. Just use the laser itself as the weapon. Point it at your target and it's gonna melt or even explode. That's it. Don't make it complicated. What? What's that? Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so maybe there is a way for this weapon to make some sort of sense. This is called the Lightcraft. And it's a tiny aircraft that is propelled using a short pulse laser. It's been tested in the early 2000s as an alternative to standard rockets. Look at it go, it's honestly pretty impressive. So how does that work? Well, lasers and clever geometry. A laser is being shot at the back of the aircraft. The shroud is reflective so the light will bounce inside it. But that shroud has a very precise shape so that will cause the laser to focus in a very, very thin ring inside the shroud. This causes the hair to heat up and expand violently. That's the light you see here. This is hair that has been turned into a plasma. So the laser sends powerful pulses into the shroud of the aircraft, causing explosions that push the aircraft. That's very nice. Who knows, that might actually make shooting tungsten rounds a possibility in the far enough future. But you know what else causes explosions to propel bullets? Gunpowder. Use that. It works. So, are photonically propelled tungsten rounds possible? If you take that lightcraft technology and push it to the extreme with sci-fi tech, maybe? But I don't really see why you would want to do that. You are already carrying the bullets, so it seems pointless to use a massive laser to not have to use gunpowder. In any case, feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'm also live on Twitch where I sometimes pilot TSFs, so catch me there. Thank you very much for watching.